Okay. Muy buenas tardes. Uh, today is Saturday, November the something. Six. And six. And here we are with the comadre. This is Liliana. You guys have heard of me talk about her different episodes numerous times. This is her. You should watch you the show. You would know. <laughs> Never in a good way either. I brought, I brought you a mug. So, sorry the bag. Um, yeah. Did Sunny get a hold of it? No, it was under a bunch of everything else. So it was my fault, but it's new. And see, the sticker's not even creased yet. So, yeah. <laughs> Here's your mug. Thank you. Um, so the reason why I am here, like I told you guys on the episode during the week, was that November is Fox G1 Awareness Month. So as you can see, she's sporting her shirt. We are here to talk about what the Fox G1 is, because I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys don't know what it is, never heard about it, have no clue what it is, because I know I didn't. So who better to hear it than from the comadre herself? First of all, comadre, ver, preséntate con la gente. Who are you? What are you? What do you do? Que es tu oficio? Cuéntanos todo. Okay, my name is Liliana Hernandez. I'm a stay-at-home mother, wife, caregiver to my special needs daughter. I have three daughters. Um, I used to work. I love to work. But my middle child, my second child, was born with, um, I didn't even know. Pregnancy was normal according to all the doctor's appointments and ultrasounds. And um, she was born with special needs. And it wasn't until after, you know, time, um, that I would notice little things in her. And, you know, it took us, it was a long time to figure out what was wrong with her, but, um, yeah, pretty much, right now. Just stay at home, take care of her, um, take care of my other girls, my husband, you know, on that stay at home worker. <laughs> that is my job. I Staying at home. This is who she is. Okay. So now we're gonna go to the, Back to your pregnancy, okay. Oh. How did okay? You did your prenatal, everything was fine. Yeah. Go to the point the baby's born. What so happened after? It, she was born. And she was a scheduled C-section because my first was an emergency C-section. So nothing wrong there. Okay. Um, just the first couple months, she was fine. Yeah. Like you know, she looked like a typical baby. You know, the cross eyes, that's normal. Sometimes yeah. it happens, you know, until they get their focus and whatnot. And then a um, couple months go by and I just, I would try to sit her up and she would like, bloop, you know, plop over or like her legs would open like a little frog and it would just be like, okay, hey, huevona, come on, yeah. sit up, you know, and things like that. And it wasn't until like um, six months. I would always take her for her vaccines and everything. And prior to that, between four and six months, she got bronchitis. And um, I blame the pediatrician because he's dumb. He gave her the wrong medication and everything. So by six months, I'm voicing my concerns. Every single time I take her, the wellness checkups and everything, I'm like, hey, like, I don't see her. Like, she had a very small head, you know? Like, I don't see her. Like, her, I feel her head is a little bit small. She's not, like intentionally rolling over like i'll sit her up and she doesn't stay she's like by six months you're supposed to like stay kind of already you know yeah, have your and, strength yeah, yeah and, or push yourself up or even starting to try to like roll over and things you know she knows i'm talking about her because she keeps looking over here <laughs> <laughs> and so by six months she had to get her six month shots and then that's when he was like Oh, you know what? Your daughter's head circumference is yeah. very under the line. And, and I'm like, you know what? I'm only here for you to give her her six minute shots. I haven't, because I, I literally did. I have an appointment yeah. next week with uh. the pediatrician because I even had to change like, my insurances and everything. And because I was like, I'm not coming to you no more. And yeah. if there was anything to avoid uh. whatever is wrong with my daughter and you're to blame because I kept telling you and voicing my concerns to you. I will come after you. And I will tell everybody where it was that I was taking her because I've been asking you and telling you and you have not listened to me. What would now, you say? 
Or he would just be like, oh, it's normal. 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 It's typical. Oh, oh, because you know what? By two months, she didn't have a soft spot no more. And I was like, la mollera. Yeah, she didn't have a soft spot. And, and it was completely close. It was like really hard. hard. Like it was hard. I was, and his excuse was, oh, so, sometimes that happens. I was like, and I'm Hispanic. I come from a Mexican background. I have two nephews. There's six of us. I have a lot of cousins and nieces and nephews from my cousins. And this is not normal. No. Normal is for it to close at two years old. Yeah. Because even some of them still have it yeah. at two years old. You know, so it's like, this is not normal. So I was like, okay, fine, whatever. So I just started looking into other, you know, doctors and things like that to see, like, to get another opinion, you know. So by six months, they were finally approved my switch of insurances and everything. So I was done with him. I went to a new pediatrician. And so the first one was Hispanic. And then um, the second one was Asian. And his things were, his first words were like, oh, you know what? Uh, I'm sorry, but your daughter is mentally retarded. Yeah, he used those, he used those two words. <laughs> so I was like, okay. I go, what's the next step? And he's all like, what did you feel? He told you that, like, what the fuck? I, I, that was one of them. And, and you I was like, a hothead, so I'm surprised. <laughs> I, I was like, okay, what's the next step? And he's all like, oh, you're taking this very well. I go, what do you want me to do? Yeah, what's done do, you, is do, done. do you want yeah. me to sit here and cry and yell at you and ask you why she's mentally retarded? Or do you want me to ask you, what are we doing next? Yeah. I go, what's next? Okay, uh, I'm gonna send her to a, a nutritionist, ophthalmologist, and a, a neurologist. Okay, thank you. What the, the fuck you want me to do? Sit there and cry and be like, oh, okay. of course I'm feeling like, you know, inside, but I'm like, I'm not gonna be like, you know, so whatever. You send her to an ophthalmologist first. She was still six months right By this time, she's like seven months. Seven, okay. okay. Because, you know, it takes this process and whatnot. So basically, this time she's like seven months. So we go to the ophthalmologist. So, okay. So six months, you know. Ever since like six months when it, it's like all these things just started happening. And it was like one bad news after another, after another, after another, after another, dude. I take her to the ophthalmologist. She's between seven months, point eight months. First thing they tell me. When they, they check her eyes and all this, oh, your daughter's going blind in her left eye. Okay. And she has severe strabismus. Her nerve, okay, so strabismus is when your eyes go this. This okay. is what, this is strabismus. And so it's like, some, one of, some of them, like one does one eye or like it's both eyes. Hers were always literally in here. Yeah. And like I have baby pictures like, you know, that I was able to save from like phone to phone to phone and things like that. And um, thank God for social media because yeah. if, if they weren't on there, They'd like, I, yeah, you know. So um, you would always see one eye or both Bisca. eyes. Yeah, yeah, Bisca. That's yeah. what it is. True business is Bisca. Okay. Okay. So um, he's all like, her nerves are so loose. They really, they need to be tightened. So she needs surgery like right away. And we will see if we could save her left eye. Her le she was going blind in her left eye because that eye, she it was a, like, you know how they say like the, the dead fish eye or something like that? Like it's a dead eye. Like because her nerves weren't connected. Be and so she, it was drying out. So only God knows why he does things. And I am such a firm believer in that. And so I got her in time and they were able to save her left eye. So she had when, between 10 months and a year, she had two surgeries to straighten the, the muscles and the nerves and everything to make them. And yeah, it helped her a lot. It helped her a lot. Um, that was good for like a good like six, seven, eight years, I want to say. I want to say like seven years because then she had another one again because the first one was to correct the ones from going inside. Well, with time, her eyes started going outwards. Like I started, remember that. They, that they, was about almost three years yeah, ago, Yeah, like right? three years ago, right? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. So they, they would start going outwards. Mm -hmm. So they had to do it again to keep correct it, to, to correct it this way. Yes. So 
After this, I'm not doing no more surgery in her eyes. If, if it stays like that for a good certain amount of years and then her eyes start going out again, well then, I'm okay with that, I'm fine. She's okay with that, there's nothing wrong with it. I know her eyes are healthy, but I'm not gonna keep messing with, because it's just, it's always a 50-50. Yeah. You know, so and then stressing the eyes, and and and, and then they could lose yeah. like the like the power or whatnot. You know, so we're just I'm like okay, do the last surgery and that's it. You know, so that was with their eyes. Nutrition is like oh, you have to feed extra and put oil, butter, give her this, give her that. Oh, okay. So oil oh, and butter for what? So they wanted me to add extra like fat to her food. Because she's so she, petite. yeah, and she still is. Yeah, she's so always she's been. been. She's yeah. always been because she she may not be mobile, but all those little movements she's that she does, it, it it burns calories fast. So all those movements that she has, she burns. I'm like, dude, can I have your metabolism? You know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so shut yeah. up, you All of you. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh, mama. <laughs> so thank God. She's able to eat orally. She doesn't chew like like how you and me would chew, but she chews to a certain extent. So everything I do give her has to be, you know, like really greatly cooked. And like like I could give her like beans right out of the pot or like even refried beans. I'll give her some rice, I'll give her the noodles, I'll give her the vegetables. Vegetables have to be really cooked or where, you know, they could be like mashable and things like that. I don't give her meat, it's very rare. I will give her chicken here and there, and even like the ground turkey, and every now and then like um, a piece of meat, like if I make um, birria or anything like that, I will give her the, yeah, like I'll give her the birria and stuff like that, you know, uh, but I really don't give her any like meat, you know, because it's just, yeah, she digests it and everything, you know, but it's just like, she'll choke on it, because she doesn't chew it really good, and I'm not about to be blending meat for her, you know, it's like, no. I'm not, you know, so the nutritionist was like that, and yeah, she was like, for that first year, she had three cans of pediatric and regular food, she only picked up, she, she went from like 12 pounds to like 16 in one year, and then they wanted to give her, uh, put a G-tube on her, and I was like, no, those are the feeding, yeah, the feeding tubes, feeding tubes. yeah, the feeding tubes, so they wanted to put a G-tube on her. Si comía bien, que because she's, she's, she's still underweight. She's still considered underweight. And she doesn't pick up weight. She picks up like maybe, if anything, five pounds a year. But it's just like with the growth spurt that she has and, and she's doing like she's been doing better and better and better, you know? So with the weight, you know? So right now she's about like at 60 pounds and she's, um, I want to say like four feet between 48 inches to 50 inches, you know, long. So she's at four feet, four feet something, you know? But hey, as long as, and I always remember that, as long as she doesn't show, like she doesn't have indentation, that means she has fat. Okay. So if you don't, if you show like, see, you don't have, so you have fat in you. So you're good. <laughs> In me, on me, right? around me. No. So if, if she would like have like an indentation, uh -huh. then that means Le falta. yeah, that's something wrong. So See, it's like there's a, a point for you guys. Yeah. So push it. Si se queda para abajo, like no más. Yeah, like if you have a white, if it's there, if it leaves it white, then that means that you don't have fat in you, and you and you need more. You know, and she doesn't get indentation. So I'm like, okay, then she'll she's be good. good. You know, yeah, she's good. But then we go to a neurologist. So, okay. The neurologist checks what? The neurologist is a specialist that has to do with the brain. The brain. Neurologist. Yeah. So, okay. We go to a neurologist. She's like eight, nine months by this time. And um, the office that they send me to, they're going to put her in the tube so they could do a scan to see why she, you know, why she has a small head. And so, um, hold on, at this point, they're still thinking she's mentally. What? So at this point, they said they were still under the assumption that that's all she, that was that wrong with there her. Is, that she's mentally retarded, but that um, it could fall under anything, you know? So I was like, okay, fine. Right? Anything. Yeah. Okay. So 
the neurologist, um, we go to our or we go to the MRI, the clinic that they send us to. The neurologist send us to a clinic, and then because they don't do um, like the tubes, the scans there, you know. So the tubo, there. yeah, yeah. Okay. So they could they could get the, see what's going on, you know. So they um, we go to the office, and then they're like, oh. I go, yeah, my daughter has an appointment, da, 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 da. and they're like, oh, we didn't know it was a child. Did you not see the birthday when you got the paperwork? They're like, oh, I'm sorry, ma'am, but we don't do children here. So you have to go back to your neurologist or your um, the person who made the referral and tell yeah, them to send one. you to a yeah. hospital because they need to put her to sleep. It's because one. Yeah, because they need to put her to sleep because she needs to be still, you know? So I'm like, okay. So I call the pediatrician's office, I let them know, and then they're like, oh, okay, um, we're going to um, make a referral and see if we could get you to so-and-so hospital. I'm like, okay, fine. So while I'm waiting for the referral and to get, you know, to get her to take her to a, um, to get that, that stuff done, you know, she's 10 months, I'm washing, and my friend was over that day. And the laundry mat was literally like I lived in the trailer, but at that at that time, so the was like maybe like a hundred steps away from my trailer. So I was over there, and then I just hear my friend, yeah, 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 yeah. and then I was like, what? She's all like, something's wrong with the baby. She's foaming out of her mouth, and she's really white, and she's not white. You know, beautiful color. Yeah, it's my negra. That's my negra. You know, she, she's not white. And I was like, what the fuck? So I leave my clothes and then I run over there to the house. She's like convulsing. So I was like, motherfucker. And I'm like, okay. I grabbed her and I'm like, dude, can you hold her? Can you go with me? And then um, I I had only, I had Valeria and her. So Valeria, my oldest. So I told, I go, mommy, go over there with the neighbor. And then I, I speed it off. I go to uh, Mount Care Hospital. And I lived at that time right there on mission. On Mission and East End. Mm -hmm. Wait, uh -huh. Yeah. No, over there on that side. Oh, yeah. Forget it. I'm over here. <laughs> I'm used to being over there. <laughs> so, on Mission and East yeah. End. So it's over there. So I live on Mission and East End. So boom, I took it to Mount Care Hospital. So I am running red lights. I'm honking. My friend is over here. Natalia, Natalia, trying to get a reaction out of her. I make it to Montclair Hospital. No, I don't crash. I don't hit nobody. Like nobody pulled me over. Nothing. And then um, I go inside the hospital. I have her in my hands, and they're like, "Hi, can we help you?" And they see like this little lifeless body in my hands, and they just like take her out of my hands, and they take her inside. By this time, already like. 15 minutes have gone by, you know, and she's still lifeless, you know, and then um, I couldn't talk for shit. I cannot get a single word out of me. I was just like, uh, 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 uh. I could not say nothing. Like, and I was like, they take her out of my hands, they take her inside, they take me with them, and then it wasn't until like another like five like, it, it just seems like forever, dude. There was like maybe five, ten minutes go by, and then I see her color coming back, and she's like, ah, she starts like crying, you know? And then that's when I, I'm like, oh, 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 something, some, something's wrong. You know, like, I'm starting to like try to talk. And then they're like, okay, just relax, relax. You know, she's reacting, you know, just calm down. And this. so finally when I'm able to talk and I'm like, I don't know what's wrong with her. She was supposed to get an MRI done, a, a CAT scan. She was supposed to get like a scan done. I go, I was waiting for a referral because the place they sent me to don't do children. So we're supposed to go to the hospital. And they're like, okay, don't worry. We're going to sedate her right now. You know, we'll get a CAT scan done on her. And, you know, you could take it to your neurologist. Do you have a neurologist? I'm like, yeah, we're already, we already seeing one. And they're like, okay. So they take her, you know, she's all bandaged up. She's like, you know, like out of it. They do the CAT scan and then um, they send us back to the room. We're waiting. Well, the guy comes back and I see his face. I was like, oh no, like, you know, like what's wrong? And he's like, I'm so sorry. But your daughter's missing 25 to 35% of her brain. It's not complete. And I'm like, why? How? 
And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> he's like, take this to your neurologist, give it to him, and, you know, we're going to give her meds. And um, I'm sure that was a seizure that she had. So, yeah. So, 10 months, first seizure. 10 months. She will be 11 on... <laughs> Yeah, well, on Thursday, I think her birthday's on Yeah, if they're the same. Wait, 11, 12, 10. No, her birthday's on Friday. Just kidding, your birthday's on Friday, girl. <laughs> She'll be 11 on Friday. And, yeah, 10 months was her first seizure. Um, they started her on phenobarbitrol. That was phenobarb. So, phenobarb, they, they gave her that. And then, um, from there, just been, you know. Um, I took the CD to the neurologist. He looks at it, and he, so his thing was, okay, so I took the CD to him. He's so like, oh, okay, your daughter has microcephaly. Microcephaly, what is that? So, um, it means micro small, and cephaly is her brain is small. I'm like, okay, so why did this happen? And they're like, well, we don't know. Okay, so she's just going to have a small head. Uh, yeah, maybe. Okay. So, how are we going to control now these, you know, these things, like these seizures, like what's going to happen? Well, they already work. I'm going to keep giving you medication. Mm -hmm. And, um, until after the nutritionist, they send me to a GI. The GIs are the ones that have to do with, like, their intestines to see if they don't have GERD or, like, any reflux and things like that, you know? So, okay. So... He was also content. They did like biopsies on her to make sure, like you know, there was nothing wrong in her, like either um, with her, um, with her colon or anything like that, because there could be like a lot of things. Well, thankfully, it's only her brain, the one that didn't finish developing. So she, you know, and then like her organs and everything else works perfect. She's her liver, her her lungs, everything else is healthy and like it works. It, they function, you know. They function correctly how they're supposed to function, you know. So, and then um, by the time so by this I'm like okay, you know, it's like well, oh, she's gonna be having seizures, you know. Her brain, she's missing twenty five to thirty. I have no explanation why, you know. And then I'm just like, you know. As, you know, just, I'm Catholic, and I'm just like, you know, Lord, help me, you know, just give me the patience, give me, you know, because way before even, like, any of this, like, she would cry a lot. Oh, my God, boy, I wish she would cry. <laughs> <laughs> she would just cry and cry and cry, it, always at night. It, it, it was just like this nonstop crying. I would give her like Tylenol, you know, because maybe something was hurting or, and it was just like nonstop. nonstop. Yeah, it would be frustrating sometimes. And it's just like, you know, she was just crying, crying. I'm like, maybe then I was like, maybe she was having like little seizures or something was happening in her head, you know, and it was just causing her pain and, you know, and it was just like, okay. So, so when you would hold her, was she able to hold her head? No. It would just flop. Like she would, sometimes she was just like, you know, no, what she would do is just this all the time. Yeah. This. Let it hang. Yeah. And, and it, to me, it was because now with all that we know what's going on and with the gears and everything and everything. So I'm like, so that's why she would do that. You know, because even now they still tell me different things with her vision. You know, because... You've seen her, and she does this. Mm -hmm. She looks at you from the corner of her eyes. Mm -hmm. Or she'll go to this side, and she'll do this. So she's lucky. She, she, she's looking, and that's how she focuses. Because for so many years, she was just always like this. Always like this. You, you know? So she got herself used to looking like sideways. that. Yeah, mm -hmm. sideways. You know? And the dropping of the head, it would be, that's how she felt comfortable. Mm -hmm. Because maybe she, her, the prescription that she has is like so strong. Because she also has astigmatism. Mm. So the astigmatism, you know what that is? Yeah, the eye is not rounded. The little yeah. black ball that we have, it's not round. Hers is in the shape of a football. 
So it, who knows to what certain extent it is because they cannot get a good look because she just moves Nothing too much. Like yeah. Yes, and she doesn't. They so she will not give them a complete look to see how bad that stigma is. But if you look at her her glasses, <laughs> you're like, damn, Nana, you know, thick. they're thick and they, they're pretty strong, you know, mm. and they're just going off of what the the glimpses yeah. that they get, you know. Yeah. So okay, so. The stigmatism, so uh, to me, that's like, well, yeah, that goes to figure, like, okay, I can see you from here, you know? Yeah. Like, I can't see you like this, but I can see you from down here. So, they have it. John has it. Yeah. My girls have it. They, Adrian what, had Everybody. Well, you know what? What they say, babies are born with the stigmatism, and with the time, it goes so away. Yeah. Yeah, it goes away. But some of them, it doesn't go away, you know? It's like, because Daniela también, supposedly Daniela has a stigmatism, too, but... You know, she sees perfectly fine now, but I still make her wear her glasses just to because when she gets older, she won't need them anymore, you know, because she really doesn't use them like when, when she's younger. When I was here. younger, I had it on my left eye. Uh -huh. And as an adult, when I went back, my vision was all right. Like they, nothing was it, there. So yeah, so that's what I'm telling you. Fuck. But I was older. I was already like 15 when they told but me. when they told you? Y me dieron lentes y todo. And it fit it corrected and, it. Yeah, well, yeah, I went um probably about what four years ago. Uh -huh. Yeah, when they were in like kindergarten. Remember, I had my eyes really bloodshot, super. I don't know if you remember. They were yeah, like and horrible. Yeah, they were always on drugs. Yeah. yeah. So I went to ask, and they're like, "No, you you have allergies." So that's when I found out I had allergies. I never had them before. Uh -huh. So it was, I guess, all right here. The congestion, the sinus. Yes. So yeah. um, me dieron gotas, and I started taking actual allergy pills but they I, I even asked I said do I need glasses they're like not right now why do you feel like you need them well, um sometimes I'm a, but I used to wear them mm -hmm. they're like why I'm a, I had astigmatism they're like no you don't have it no more so I was like damn okay <laughs> these allergies took it <laughs> right <laughs> yeah that's crazy so that was her purpose behind the head yeah and look. then yeah and then so the years, like, you know, it goes to two, three. By three years old, um, I went to, they started sending me to um, CHLA. Because the neurologist that we had, he was over here in Arcadia. Mm -hmm. He was over there in Arcadia, over there in that area. And then, so then I started going to CHLA because I think there was like a switch in insurances. And see, that's the other thing. Every time the doctor gets new insurances and everything, you know, it's like, okay, but... We ended up in CHLA, CHLA's Children's Hospital of Los Angeles. So, um, we started going over there, and by that time, he started giving her, um, he added a second medication. Because um, the, the one that she was taking, it wasn't like helping her. She was getting like, she was starting to have seizures. So she would have seizures. And How often was, was she getting them now? So like in a month? She would get, um, in a week, she would get like four or five. And then it would, it wouldn't, she wouldn't get anything for like for three weeks. And then again, the next month, she would get some for like three or four. You know, so it was like, they were starting to come out like, you know. Recent. Yeah. They, they, they were, yeah. Seguido. Yeah. Oh. And then, um, so then they added a second medication, which was um, Keppra. So by this time, she was taking Phenobarb and Keppra. So then um, by four years old, they take away the Kepra, the phenobarb. So um, she's taking phenobarb and Kepra. So they took the phenobarb away and they started giving her Kepra and Trilepto. So by this time, she's four years old and then they added a third medication. So Kepra, Trilepto, and now Onfi. Because she was starting to get them and they would last up to 20 minutes. So it would be hospital ride, call 911, and then um, because 20 minutes is too, 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 too long. And she wouldn't respond, and it was just like, so she's on, since four years old, she's been on three medications. And with the years, every year, it had, they, they um, increase them. And because she outbreaks the, the dosage, and they'll come out harder. So this past year, so in 2019, so 2020 was pandemic, the beginning of the pandemic. 
Well, that whole year, 2020 up to 2021, we had no increase in medication because she hasn't gone out. No stress for her. Nope. She hasn't gone out. She hasn't had it because she, by this time, she also used to have anxiety. Yeah. She would get anxiety. And she was getting anxiety attacks at school. She would start screaming and crying. She had to start wearing the um, noise reducers because it was starting to get to her. So 2020, no Not medication bad. increase. Good. No medication increase. So far, 2021, no medication increase. So right now we're shooting for like, you know, it's been one year, but we're going on two mm -hmm. that yeah. she has not had no medication increase. Seizures, very minimal, but she is medically dependent. She, she has, they're called medically dependent seizures because if she doesn't take the medication, That's she happening. will have seizures. So they're not severe towards where, you know, because a lot of people like they say, oh, well, give her CBD, try CBD oil and da, da, da. Well, you got to understand and how it was explained to me. And I'm like, oh, okay, makes sense. CBD works for people that seize nonstop. Mm -hmm. That they're just seizing all the time. And that helps them. She doesn't get seizures like that. She gets them maybe every three months, every four months. And the medications control them. But she does have to be on the medication. Because if she doesn't have the medication, she will start seizing. How much? We don't know. But the seizures, she does get strong seizures. They will last more than five minutes. You know? So I do have emergency medication that I have to give her. As soon as she starts seizing, I have to time it. And if it goes past three minutes, okay, bring me her, you know, bring me her, it's rectal. And then I have to give it to her. And then I wait. If she stops, okay. If she doesn't stop within two, three minutes, I have to call 911 and they have to come and get her because that just means that it's going to be longer and, you know, they don't stop breathing. You think they stop breathing yeah. because they lose their color and they turn, but what it is, it's just that the oxygen just stops going, it slows down. That's why people get like, you know, oh, they're not breathing. They are breathing, but it's just their oxygen, yeah. It, 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 you know, it reduces. She's had pl plenty of hospitalizations. And one time she did stop breathing when we took her, and it was a seizure that she had at school that the kids had, you know, they noticed and everything. We took her to, they took her to the ER and everything. And they're like, she, she, they're doing all this to her. And then I'm like, she's not breathing. They're like, what? I'm like, she's not breathing. Look at her because she's naked, you know? And she was not breathing. Her her stomach her that. stomach wasn't moving. And they're like, oh. We, this and, was already in the hospital? In the hospital, yeah, yeah, the ER. And so they're like, oh, we got to get a tube in her. Do you give us permission? I'm like, do what you need to do to get my child breathing. Mm -hmm. You know, and that was the first time they, had, they ever have intubated her. She's never been intubated. And that was the first time they intubated her. And because she literally stopped breathing. She was because they drugged her so much, they had they were giving her all this medication to try to stop having her seize that like to me they overdosed stop, her. Stop breathing. Yeah, they overdosed her because they sedated her too much and she wasn't breathing. They intubated her and every time they would try to turn off the oxygen to try to take it up, she would stop breathing. So and they transferred us to CHLA and you know, that's like, you know, for a good amount of years, we, we would be, she would be out for like five, five to six days every time. Like when she would get them like really bad. But that one time, yeah, we stayed like a good five days, six days because like, you know, they had to wait and this and this and that to make sure. And no, oh, every time she comes out, you know, better and better. And that's just with seizures because she's had other hospitalizations. <laughs> I remember that one time. For the RSV. At school and she had one yeah and just the other day i was talking about it because my comadre that's on the show with us all the time she gets them often uh -huh. and i was just like you know to me like i told them the first the first first and only because i've never seen anybody have a seizure before besides mm -hmm. a baby and it's just like like fuck. i remember i was crying i was so scared like uh, that's why I tell them, like, my comadre is so fucking strong in every way. Like, I, I would lose my shit. I wouldn't even know, like, and, like, even I told John that day, like, fuck, I don't even know, like, 
Fuck, how Lily deals with it. Like, oh my God, I, I, I almost died myself having a heart attack. Like, <laughs> what do you do? This is your child just sitting there. Like, it, it was an impression, you know? Yeah. Like, fuck, believe it or not. Like, it's, I can, like, recall it. Like, it was just yesterday. Like, fuck, man. And it's like this desperation, like, like, stop, you know? Yeah. Oh mm -hmm. my God. But, um, it yeah, takes his I, time, you know, to get there to that. Like, before, like I would always like. I remember one time too that they took her, and um, it was like it was. I think we were living here already, and it was in the middle. It was like towards late night already, and then she's just like you know lifeless again. I'm like fuck, not this again. And I I almost fainted at the hospital. You know, it's like you would think, oh, you're used to it, no. but no, it's just. There's moments where it just gets to you that it's just like, fuck, you see your child and you're like, you've already lived and you've already done, you know, you're partying, you're doing this, that, whatever. You already did your life and here is your child who is never going to experience things like that. And, and, and it's like, you feel so useless because you can't do anything to help them, you know? And I'm over here like, you know, oh. Like, like feeling, I'm like, fuck. And, and I felt weak and everything. And they pull a chair and they grab me and they sat me down. They're like, it's okay, mom. You know, she's going to be okay. She's going to be okay. But it's just, it, it gets to you because it's like, is she really going to be okay? You know, is she really? It's like, how, how much longer does she have to go through this shit like this? You know, and it, it sucks sometimes, you know, it sucks. But this whole pandemic thing has helped her like, like right now she's been home from school and because she had, you know, spine surgery and, but I'm supposed to send her back now. <laughs> Look at her, she said she's no. Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> you want to go back to You want to go back to school? Tell your mom no school. Just let me watch cartoons. <laughs> and, um, we'll see, we'll see how it, how it, you know, how it goes and, um, She's only going to go to school up until sixth grade regardless. And I'm, always, I'm, I'm yeah. taking her out. I'm taking her out. I'm pulling her out out of school. And she's going to get homeschooled the rest, you know, until it's time to graduate, whatever, you know. Um, because she's a female, nonverbal. And she can't tell me if they hurt her, if they're Touch her, touching anything, her, yeah. they're yeah. feeding her correctly or whatnot. Anything, and yeah. She's staying home after that. So. Okay, take us to the part where you find out that she ah, has. So, okay. The Fox G1. So, we go to um, CHLA by three years old. By this time, we're still, okay, so by this time, we're still with the same pediatrician. But now, his son steps into the business. Mm. So, one time the son sees her, he takes an interest in her. So he's all like, have you seen him? Was he a new doctor or just yeah, new there? No, he's coming out as, you know. He's new. Yeah, to the he's field, new. To, yeah, but his dad owns the, the pediatrician office, you yeah. know. So he wants to work with dad, okay, yeah. to maybe one day take over. And sure enough, he took over, you know. Now it's his office, you know. So um, we, he takes an interest in her. And then he's all like, have you been seen by a, like a genealogist? you know, a special genetics. I was like, I've been waiting for your dad. Yeah. Like we were supposed to do a referral. This. He's like, you know what? We're gonna, I'm gonna get this rolling, you know? And I'm like, okay, cool, you know? I'm like, this is still the agent? Yeah, the agent, okay. you know? He's he's young, coming out of the, you know, as and, and, and it's, he, he, he wants to learn, like, yeah. you know? And that's awesome, yeah. dude. He had that passion in him. Yeah, that's fucking awesome, you know? So, okay. So he sends us to, we get a genetic specialist. We go to CHLA. And then, um, so then he tells me, so we're going to do, you know, blood work. So by everything that you're telling me and what's going on and this and this and that, it could be one or two things. Who's telling you this? This that, The geneticist. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Geneticist, specialist at CHLA. Mm -hmm. So he's all like, it could be one or two things. Okay. Lay it on me, you know? It's like, yeah, what, are we, <laughs> what are we dealing with? Okay, you know? Okay. So he said, one, it could be um, a chromosomal or a gene thing that, you know, there could be something in there, in the in the genes or in the chromosomes. Something could be wrong. And this is why her brain didn't fi finish developing, because she didn't finish developing brain tissue. And this is why 
the mollera, the Se salpa, cerró. closed. Mm -hmm. Because what do you, happens when you cut yourself? You scar. Mm -hmm. You you scab. <laughs> so since her brain felt we need a heal, we need a scab <laughs> to protect whatever it is that's in there. So that's why it closed so soon. Okay, makes sense. So it could be a chromosomal thing, a genetic thing, da 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 da. I'm like, okay, what's the second option? Um, her brain is gonna keep shrinking and shrinking until she dies. Okay. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> Shut so, it off, mom. Right? Right? So okay, so I'm like, okay, take it. Can't do anything about it. We'll be back. Took her to get the blood work. Okay. So then it's the longest month of my life, okay? Because we went in October. And then because it was November when we went for our results. So longest month of my life, I make that drive from LA back to Pomona. I remember I called one of my friends and, you know, I'm talking to her, I'm telling her. And, you know, she's all like, hi, Lily. She's all like, everything's going to be okay. You know, tú eres una chingona. You have overcome so much stuff and this and that. And, you know... Nana's going to be okay, and this and this and that, and, you know, and put you in my prayers, and this and this and that, and I'm like, okay, thank you. <laughs> so, November comes, we go, and then um, he's all like, so I have good news. I was like, okay, and he's all like, it is a chromosomal, you know, um, she has a deletion, and because of this deletion in one of her chromosomes, um, this is why her brain didn't finish developing brain tissue, and it didn't finish developing. I'm like, oh, Whew. okay. So what's next? You know, what do we do? And they're like, well, unfortunately, she's always going to be having seizures. And I'm like, that I'm already getting used to, you know, so. But why does she, what causes the seizures? Because her brain is not complete. Okay. It, since the brain is not complete, there's a lot of, there's, so what seizures are, basically, is like, they're like cortes. Mm -hmm. Son cortos. They're little electrical shocks. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. And so there's something going on in there or something missing. And says so she's missing so much. And so it's not making connections. So this is why the seizures happen. And the type of seizures that she gets are focal. Focal meaning they have to do with the eyes. Because that's how I know that she's seizing. It's through her eyes. She doesn't get the, the ones where they're jerking and like, no, she, she doesn't, never has had anything like that. She just starts like, her eyes just start going to the side. She loses all color. She starts getting gray and she's just like, sometimes she foams and sometimes she doesn't and she screams. She'll scream, you know? So, okay. And then, um, so, and I'm like, okay, so what, he's like, so, so far what we know of, um, it's, it, so we have, we get half our chromosomes from our dad and half our chromosomes from the mom. So that's how it makes the little chromosome, okay? So in chromosome 14 and the long arm, we have a little, little, little stub that's called the short arm. And then we have a longer piece on the bottom that's called the long arm. So it's in the chromosome 14 and it's the fox fork, the forkhead. And that's where the name fox. fork. Yeah, because you can't be saying, oh, she has fork fox. Like the fox fork, box fork, something. It's like too yeah. complicated. <laughs> like, <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> so they, they say um, they came up with box G1 syndrome. You know, it's a syndrome. So she has a deletion. There's a variety of that. There could be a multiplication, duplication, I mean, um, and like different types, but it falls under the fox G1 syndrome. So hers is a deletion. She has a deletion. And that affected that. So this is why her, her brain didn't finish developing. And it affected her, her eyes because since the brain didn't finish developing, her nerves and her and her, her muscles didn't finish getting tightened because it didn't know it was supposed to get, you know, stronger and, and, and be fit, you know, tight, you know? Yeah. And so this is why she doesn't walk, sit up, or even talk because... Her brain doesn't tell her, okay, you need to do this, you need to do that, you need to talk, you need to walk. And so um, it affected that type of development, you know? Okay, so um, it was considered back then, so this is in, so she was 11, 12, 10, so by 2013, 
She was three years old is when we got her diagnosis at three years old. Only took, you only, know. Only, only. And three because years. of the Medici. You know, so. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Medici, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so three years. We, 2013. And then um, they, at that time, she was one out of like a hundred and something kids worldwide, internationally so known. Like not even known either. No. And they were comparing it to Rett syndrome. So Rett syndrome, they have very similarities with Fox G1. Mm -hmm. Rett? Rett, R-E-T-T. Rett. Okay. Okay, R-E-T-T. So they would compare it to Rett syndrome. But it's not, has nothing to do with it. And because they had very sim, uh, they had few similarities yeah. at that time. What's well, well, what's Fox G one? What mm -hmm. is that? So they were com So you have autism. Mm -hmm. You have autism, and then you have all these little umbrellas that yeah. fall, fall under it. Okay. So they had Rett syndrome. So they had Fox G one under that. Well, no, Fox G one is his own um, thing. Yeah. Yes, it's its own thing. Okay. So. Um, yeah. By this time, he gives us a follow-up appointment and then wants to see us. So when we go back the next follow-up appointment, he's like, okay, it has nothing to do with Rhett. It's just Fox G1. It's by itself. And, you know, they give me the, the paper. They give me a printout and show me, like, you know, where exactly the deletion is. So she's missing information in that chromosome. And because of that m missing information... Is why she didn't finish developing her brain, and okay. At least it wasn't anything like, yes, I know one day she'll be gone. And I accept it. But I just want to give her the best, happiest, pain-free life that I can. And the one thing that I always ask the guy above is take her before me. Because it sounds, it may no, sound bad. I get it. It's you know, your, some, your some people may take yeah. it bad or whatever, but you know what? No. Take her before me because... Nadie la va a cuidar como tú. Exactly. And it's no one else's responsibility. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 I don't want it to be none of her siblings' responsibility. You know, and I'm going to be here. And that's the only thing that I ask that big guy above to, you know, because she... She, she, she's not going to be taking care of the way she should be because even if it, it, it's their sisters and they love her dearly, but it's yeah, not no. the same, you know? Yeah. And, but now, as of October 2021, there's 860, 860 um, registered <laughs> cases because there, there's a, there's a website. There's a foundation. There's a foundation. They're trying to find because okay, the deletion that she has, she just has that, and like every now and then, like so because of that, she got scoliosis because then she can't, yeah, yeah. because she said she can't sit up, she doesn't know how to sit up, she just would curve, mm -hmm. so she got scoliosis. Um, that was a whole other like thing too because we would see an ortho out here in Pomona. He would request x-rays. They would do the x-ray sitting. I'm um, laying down. Laying down, laying down, laying down. Well, only God knows why he does things. We were supposed to go to a follow-up appointment last year. They call me and they tell me, oh, well, we don't take your insurance no more, so um, you have to go somewhere else. Okay, don't worry about it. Call the pediatrician. Hey, girls, you guys switch insurances. Oh, yeah, mija, what do you need? I'm like, well, she needs to go see the ortho. We got to follow up every year, you know? Oh, okay. I'm like, if you could get me out here with another ortho, that's fine. I go, but if you could send me the CHLA, send me the CHLA. Yeah, okay. Within a week, I get a call. Yeah, you got, um, you know, we got a referral here for Natalia Hernandez. Da, da, da. And I'm like, oh, yeah, okay. You got a CHLA. I take her. They're like, oh, you got to go back for the x-rays. Okay, where do you want me to lay her down? They're like, no, you need to sit her up. She doesn't sit. Okay, well, you can hold her. Okay. So I, I'm holding her, you know, they take totally x-rays, you know? Yes! So she's sitting, and I'm holding her, they take x-rays. Okay. 2019, the curve was at a 30-degree angle. 30 degree, it's okay. It's not concerning, you know? Okay. 
those x-rays were taken laying down. 2020, we go see CHLA, they do x-rays sitting up. Your daughter has a curve at 80 degree angle. That's 50 more. I'm like, what do you mean at an 80 degree angle? I, I know in one year they're not, and they're like, I'm like, wait a minute. Does it have anything to do the way they take x-rays? And he's all like, what do you mean? I go, well, the ortho that we were seeing in Pomona, Costada. they were, the place that I would take her to would do him laying down. Like, who, who is responsible there? Like, did the guy, what is, are they supposed to do it laying down? He's all like, typically in children, like your daughter, they're supposed to be doing them sitting up. So it could be either or. That the requesting doctor or the place. And every year she's been having them? She's been having x-rays, and but laying down. And he said, and when you're laying down, you tend to correct yourself. Oh, see, that's... Uh -huh. Aha. Yeah. So you, you cannot see the true nature of the curvature. And I was like, oh, my God. There's a reason why I'm here. What's next? So that's always my yeah. what's next. What now? Yeah. <laughs> what's next? What do we do next, you know? So she's all like, okay, um, we have to do surgery. And I'm like, okay, I could put her in a vest, you know, and see how it goes. But I'm going to tell you right now. It's way too. It's way too late to correct it with the vest right now. It's too late. So I'll give you the vest and you can put it on her until we do the surgery. I'm like, okay. So I'll see you in a couple weeks, a couple months. Okay, go get the vest done by the time. Do, and, and then she got COVID, you know. So it's like, oh. I put the vest for a couple times and then we go see the ortho. And then he's all like, so how's the vest going? And I'm like, you know, she don't like it. Yeah. She hates it. What was it like, mom? Um, it, it, it was, you know what? As a matter of fact, I threw it out already too. Cause I was like, why do I want it for, you know? Yeah. So, it was this little like you could say like a faja it looked uh -huh. like a waist trainer and it was just underneath like this and it went underneath her boobs it had a real soft thing right here but over here was hard plastic mm -hmm. so and it, it tied to the back so the straps and so it would be like boom yeah. it, it's stringing her out you know and, and like like and she'd be like she hated it she hated it her little face on ah oh, she hated it she did not like being in that thing because i've like, seen her in a, in a messed up mood <laughs> yeah and i'm like you know i'm sorry babe you know so and then i'm like she doesn't like it he's all like okay he's all like so did you give thought to and i'm like well i thought we were here to Do talk it. about yeah. when the surgery is gonna be so i'm like oh okay i was like yeah. i thought that's what we were here for like i told you yes that was because some parents i go look if we're going to keep seeing each other, you're going to learn one thing from me. I want my daughter to have the best pain-free life that she could have. It is what needs to be done. Yeah. And I trust you. And the Lord will guide your hands. And I know you will, you're will. you going to help my daughter get better. So, yes, I want the surgery. No, I'm not going to wait. Because when he showed me when he showed me the Prex x-rays and they're telling me that, you know, she's at an 80 degree her ribs, where she was curving down, the rib was already coming close with the hip. And then he told me they start tearing from the inside out. Why am I going to wait for yeah. that? No. Why am I going to wait until then? Yeah. I don't want her to experience any pain, you know? So, um, he, he was, why am I going to wait? Why am I going to wait for her to be in pain or experience that type of pain? During this time... Okay, do you know if they told you she was already having pain or she was just used to it already? No, she was just used to it, but I don't think she was in any pain because none of her bones were like rubbing against each other. But I think she would have like, you know, like maybe like back pain or yeah, discomfort or things like pain, that. Pain, pain, pain. No, yeah. no, because she, she's not verbal, but she's very vocal. Mm. Yeah. As, as you can <laughs> tell. You know, and so I was saying, I've seen her mad and upset and not it, having. Remember, she even rolled her eyes a million times. She does. And you know who she does that to a lot? To her dad. <laughs> she, see, see, she rolls her, her eyes to her dad. So um, we scheduled surgery, and she just had surgery this year in July, July 8th. And um, everything was a success, thank God. 
she did have to get a um, blood transfusion because she's so petite yeah. and she had two blood transfusions but she came home we were supposed to stay seven days and we came home on the sixth day we would have came home on the fourth day because she was doing so good but the only thing was that i was not bringing her home because she did not have a bowel movement she did not go poop for nothing and i was like i'm not taking she had so surgery was on a thursday she had poop monday tuesday okay monday and tuesday she had two perfectly good bowel movements but wednesday she didn't have any and then thursday we're in the hospital so she couldn't eat anything okay it's understandable but monday and tuesday those foods are from the days prior yeah so where's the food from monday and tuesday you know so it's like so thursday we were there so we were there friday saturday sunday monday tuesday we came home back on wednesday because we came home on the sixth day so we didn't stay seven so i didn't i didn't bring her home i didn't bring, they gave her they were giving her marilyn's they did enemas they gave her a shot also to do the because okay so she was on morphine norco um oxy like she was on all these medications because of the pains you know it's like they did the what they did was a spinal fusion so they put two rods and put screws all down her back and it's from T3 down to the tailbone. So you Google a picture. The where, whole back. Yes. Yeah. From top to so bottom. So Google your spine. Where's T3 at? It will t show you where T3 and it goes all the way down to your tailbone. So um, she was on all these like heavy medications. So that constipated her too. You know, so I'm like, I'm not taking her home. I'm not going home until she goes poop. So like three days, you know, giving her things and this and that, trying to make her go poop and this and that. Nada. Finally, like on the, like, so we're there probably like on, by the fifth day, barely something comes out. And then the following morning, everything came out. Okay, we could go home now. I'm not going to be back in the ER because she's... Was it the medicine? Yeah, yeah it, it was the medications, yeah. you know, the blood... Yeah. It was everything, and it, it, her body was just, just her like... body in shock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. So, and then, yeah, we came back home, and... Um, one thing that he did tell me was that... Um, there's always complications to surgeries, you know? And so, he said, her movements might come back or may not in her legs... Like, because she does move her legs a lot, you know? And, you know, and I was like, okay, that's a risk I'm willing to take in order for her lungs, her lungs not to collapse, for her, for her not to tear internally, you know? And, and I'm like, okay. She, she's already not mobile as it is. She doesn't walk. So it's like, she knows some weapon. you know, it's like, yeah. it's a risk I'm willing to take, you know? So, July, August, September. Ending of September, beginning of October. Natalia, what are you doing? Kicking the bed, throwing her pillows, already twisting again, like trying to like she she her little movements that she does, she ends up like twisting herself, you know. So she warms herself around, and I was like, "You're better now, huh? You're better." And I'm like, "Okay, they're back." And, and yeah, she moves her legs a hundred percent again moving her body she's so that just means that the fusion of the rods with the spine is complete so she doesn't feel uncomfortable more she she's like okay there's something new but ah i'm used to it and i could move yeah. now and i could you know so she does her movements and everything back again so now we have another future surgery is to correct her hips because of the scoliosis the the hips were her hips are backwards in the sense that when you close your legs, your 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 hips are supposed to close or hers open. And when she opens her legs, her hips close. They're backwards. It, it, they're, they're backwards because since she was always curved to the side. Yeah, she was always curved to the side. But she's here, healthy and happy. Huh? So, like, overall, the, the website you said that are registered. Yeah. Okay. These studies only go back about 15 years, say, say, right? Yeah, say. you could, you could. So she's, what, 11? And yeah. it was still new. It was new, yeah. It was How new. far back does this go then? They don't, see, it 
2013, they only had like a hundred, like a hundred cases. I want to say like hundred and twenty registered in the foundation because it, it's the web, the it's uh, Fox Stream One. Dot org. org is the International Fox Stream One Foundation. Okay, and um, it was only in 2013. There was only like a hundred and some cases. Okay, not even close to 200. So now 800. We're yeah. Now we're at 860, but now it's been what? like, okay, so she was born in 2010. So it's been like already 11 years since she was born. So maybe in those three years, those first three years from 2010 to 2013, maybe that's where they've gotten those cases. But they really don't have, you know, like it's only been like 11 years. Yeah. Like technically, you know, it's only been like 11 years, you know, and but now you have... See, and there's a variety of children that have different things. Some kids are very mobile. They can walk and and some kids talk. They they, they they can, you know, and they have like autism also. And they have other different, you know, more things with them. Yeah. But their main diagnosis is right. the Fox G1. Yeah, the syndrome. You know, it's the syndrome, the Fox G1 syndrome. So a lot of them... The majority of them are okay. non mobile, you know, they're they don't they don't walk or anything like that. And That's what I'm mobile. asking because I don't talk like in my family. I remember being a kid, my grandparents had like acquaintances and they had a son, but he was a grown man. Mm -hmm. And I, I never knew what was wrong with him because mm -hmm. you know, I was only like five, but I would see that I see like, like Nana in a little chair and like he wouldn't talk, nothing. My mom would feed him también like little foods and I would just trip out because you no know, one's a kid and you don't see, like we never see nothing like that. Yeah. So I tell him like, you know, how far does this go back that nobody ever knew? Yeah, or that's... thought to look into like what is wrong with them. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's crazy. Like to me, it's crazy. Like, and what you know what? The, the majority of cases that are coming up now, that are showing up now, um, they're older kids. Mm -hmm. They're older kids. They're older kids and they're finally get because we're, when I say like worldwide and international, it's in Australia and in everywhere, India and in yeah. Europe and the Netherlands. It's all these places, like not just here in the United States. Mm -hmm. It's in Europe. It's in all these other. They have cases in Mexico. There's a girl. Her name is Vale Valeria, and then um, there's a case in Mexico. And then we have the obviously in Facebook we have the Fox Street One parents. You know the parent support group and then there's the fox g1 international foundation page and then like they're doing national history studies they're doing all sorts of things because what they're trying to see is like yeah they can't do anything no more to correct like they can't yeah. correct what yeah. natalia has her brain is not going to grow back yeah but if they could do therapies to the other children you know or even try to do a therapy before you know and things like that they're trying to get like you know Hopefully one day they can find a cure. Yeah. You know, they can find a cure. Okay, let me ask you this, if you know now. You said when you had your um, ultrasounds done and stuff, they never caught anything. Mm -hmm. Is it undetectable still now? I think so, because what it is, it's in the chromosomes. So unless they do like a genetic test, then that's when they will find out. So then like that would be when they're meten in an ombligo, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they see, didn't do that to you? I didn't want them. I didn't because okay, they never offered it because the you normal the age. No, no, I was already in my thirties. No, but like what I mean is one. Oh well, yeah. Once you hit about thirty, what is what it? Well, they five? do. They they only do like the Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that came out negative. And since not, it didn't show up anything, it that's why fine. it was fine. What they did try to do that was with my last pregnancy with my youngest. Because I told them that I had a special needs child. So when I got pregnant with my youngest, they did ask me and I denied it. I go, nope, I didn't want it. I didn't want them because there's always a risk that they could make me have a miscarriage. Yeah. And I said, no, if this child is the same then way, what? What me? Yeah. hey, if God wants me to have a special needs child, then let it be, you know, I, 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 no, I'm not going to risk my child's life. It is what it is, you know? Yeah, yeah, huh, nana. So, and I didn't, I, I, with, with my last pregnancy, I denied it. And well, after that, that's it. Like, you know, no more kids, huh? <laughs>
Oh, no, mom. No more. It's done. Yep. Okay, so you as a professional in this field parent, because you know everything going on. Look at you know chromosomes, that it's the eyes and everything. What would you tell parents that are barely starting this journey? Because it's a fucking journey. Patience. Okay. Patience, Patience in Patience. every way. Okay. Patience. What? What? Okay. You now know what what it is. What you're looking for. Everything. If you were to be able to talk to yourself back then, what would you tell yourself to look out for? And this is not normal. And do something about it. What is it? I would have done probably the same thing. Like just be persistent. I would have been like, okay, not. I was persistent because by six months, I was like, hey, I've been telling no, you, you know. are not there. Yeah. yeah, and then the only thing I would tell myself back then, it would be like, I was I was dealing with it by myself, you know, because her dad wasn't really, you know, in the picture and stuff like that back then and things. So I was really dealing with it by myself. So I would tell myself, talk to somebody more because mm -hmm. I was always holding it all by myself. And that always... It, 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 it's a, it's it's a it's, yeah it's just yeah. you know it's it, it's the stress and it's like find somebody and talk to somebody you know let somebody know you know like what's going on and this and that and with the years that's what i would do you know Start like you know, i would call my friend yeah. or you know like my childhood friend i'd be like you know what you know now they told me this this is because yeah i have siblings you know and but sometimes it's like there's kind of a leash sometimes. No, <laughs> and the way it's 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 reality, you know. And sometimes you find comfort talking with in other, other people, people yeah. than with your own family because they don't even understand. They be like, "Oh no, you're dramatic. Okay, you just want attention." Yeah, fool. Like I asked for this, you know. Like yeah, let me go and you know, no, you know. So. That's what I would, you know, tell myself, be like, you know, look for somebody because, yeah, because for like the first three years, I dealt with it by myself and it was just like, oh my God, oh my God, this and that. And like, you know, it, it was, it was very like dark moments, you know, very dark moments and very stressful and, and towards, it got better because then I took time to myself too. I took time to myself too and did something for myself too because it, it, it's too much it's too it, it just is. was a regular kid it's fucking you know, drunk like ugh. It, 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 you like know, i always say i'm not you for fuck them kids you know? right now i'm not that complaining easy. you know i'm not no. it, it's not that it's like oh no why me i have no. never said why me and that's you know i never said why me but it was just like oh it would be too much and then it's like I have to do something for myself too, just to step away for a little bit, just for a little bit, you know. And I started doing the Zumba. I started focusing on you know my weight and this and that. And then you know, and then I was always at the school, and then got involved more in the school. And low key, that was just like just to be checking on her. Yeah. Just to be checking on her, making sure that they're doing this with her. And I would always see them. And they would Siempre never know. Enojada, esta cabrona. They would never know. And the best part would be that they would never know if I was there or not. They <laughs> would in fear. Yes. Because. They'd be with their stomach sucking all day. Like, they never knew <laughs> if I was there or not. If I was in the little store, if I was doing something, because you know what? Nah, fuck that. I'm sending my kid to you. And the only reason why I I started sending her to school since she was three years old and on the bus. Yes, I would have knots in my stomach, but what am I gonna do? Keep her. I'm not gonna keep her in a bubble either. Yeah. Because I knew already, anyways, back then. She's going to stay home after a certain age, you know, after she's done with elementary. I'm not sending her to middle school and high school. Hell no. No. You know? So I sent her to school since she was three years old and on the bus, you know? And so she could get that, 
the being around other kids and because she does like being yeah, around people, people you know yeah. yeah you know but as she's getting older she's getting tired of it too yeah you well, know yeah. so it's like look <laughs> hey even typical people yeah. even typical people and children and, and i mean even adults like i don't want to be like around people yeah. you know imagine her Okay. She, this is you know, school, you're being fucking yeah. Like, yeah. You know? Rotten milk. <laughs> so, why? And then, not to be talking, you know, trash on the score you or whatever. Talk shit. You know? That's what we're here for. But the <laughs> thing is this if the class, I would understand if the class had more than 10 children. Yeah, they're very limited. Okay? I would mm -hmm. understand. Okay? But the class only had like five kids mm -hmm. and like four hands to help them. How in the fuck are you gonna give my kid all pee? I'd say literally one per child. Okay. How are you gonna give me my kid all pee? And then how are you gonna come and tell me, oh, we changed her right before we pulled her out? Yeah, I see I many have times. her all pissed 24 7. Mm -hmm. I have her. I know when she's wet and when she's not wet. I know how long it takes for that urine and for, for it to come out. That's because she's been like that for more than 40 minutes. That's not from a walk from there to here. That's maybe a minute long. Yeah. No. No. Nah. So, yeah. Huh, mommy? You let my mama notes. <laughs> so, it's, you know, it's like, and they've done fucked up too. One time, man, I'm like, they're lucky that I didn't even pull her out back then. And I was just like, whatever, dude. Like. I'm gonna keep sending her, and right now, well, right now, just because she has, they cleared her already, so I'm gonna send her back. And now with them giving them the vaccine and everything, yes, I'm gonna give her the vaccine. And, um, cause, I mean, in all reality, do, does your kid have all her vaccines? Did you vaccinate your kid before she went to school? Suzette, I didn't. I was so afraid of the vaccines, cause supposedly, then how'd she get into school? I had to get them in order to let her go to school. So my poor child had to get like all 10, like in two different visits because they were not gonna let her go to school without it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Have you been taking Sunny to get her? Yeah, her, yeah. Okay, you, because you didn't want to repeat the same exactly. mistake, mm -hmm. right? Okay, so did you get your vaccines when you were little? All of them, yeah. Yes. Vaccines affect different children and different people in different ways. But if you really do your research and all this, 90% of the world population has been vaccinated. Not just with this going on, but with prior, yeah. you know, with prior things, mm -hmm. you know? And so, yes, some people have, you know, reactions and you accept it, but you move on from it. You move on from it, you know? I got all my vaccines when I was little. Did my mom know what she was putting in me? No. no. None of us do. She, 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 she was just doing it because, okay, my, kid, my yeah. kid needs their vaccines. Yeah. You know? My kid needs their vaccines. Okay? And then it's like, with Valeria, like, my oldest, she never got the chicken pox. Why? Because there's a vaccine for that. I got the chicken pox. I, I sure as hell did. And I got it more than once. And really? I was, yes. There's six of us. In my, there's there are six of us, three boys and three girls. So we we didn't all get it at the same time. But I got it more than once, and I remember that. That okay. is so weird. His grandma told us that too, and I never knew people could get it more than once. Yes. Time. So I am prone to get shingles when I get older. Yeah. So she this just is, had the shingles too a few months back. My mom got that shit too. So it's like okay. I was waiting for my daughter, my oldest, to get her a chicken pox. Nada. And she never got it. Why? Because there's vaccines yeah. for that. You know? So it's like, but that's a whole other story, you know? <laughs> We're not going to get into a vaccine because yeah. then they'll come bomb the house. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, I'm going to send her back. And then um, she's going to get her vaccines to go back. And so is my youngest because... In here, in our house, the three of us, me, my husband, and my oldest, were all vaccinated, you know, and we didn't get, you know, mild reactions or whatnot, and whatever is in it is in it, and that's it. You know, it's like... I'm with you on that. I put it on the one above, and he knows, and that's it. Everybody, you don't know what it is. I know a lot of people that have been on drugs. You don't know what the fuck you're smoking. Exactly. And you're smoking it. Thank so don't you. be a fucking hypocrite, and I'm not doing the shot, because... 
Fuck that. I don't know what's in it. Yeah. Okay. okay. I'm just going to roll my eyes and right? smile. It's just like you don't know what's in that burrito that you're eating that you bought at the corner of so-and-so You street. never know. Unless you make it yourself or do it yourself or create it yourself, you're not going to know. Yeah, so... But yeah, she'll, she'll be going back to school and then, um, but after six, yeah, after sixth grade, she'll stay home. But thankfully, she's, she's doing really, she's, she's doing so much better now though. And it's the stress, you know, she's doing way better. And we just got one more surgery to go through. And hopefully after that, that's it. You know, the feeding tube, yeah, it's always going to be in the back of the head, but as long as she still keeps eating That's morally, okay. you know, for what? But it, it's just like how much more she'll grow. But I'm thinking she's going to grow maybe like another feet. Maybe she'll stay at five, five feet. feet. Yeah. I want to say five feet. Yeah. <laughs> no? Vas a crecer más? Vas, vas a crecer seis pies? <laughs> so, Liar. <laughs> right? Because your mother is so tall. And your father. <laughs> Look at you. She knows. Look at her laughing. Look. She's just like, Mom, stop saying jokes. Right? This ain't comedy, Mom. <laughs> this ain't stand-up comedy hour. Oh, no? But, yeah. But there's a lot of there's a lot of more information now. They're doing so many, like, fundraise, um, like, okay, so November, they got it as, you know, Fox awareness. the awareness mm -hmm. month. And to push it out there, you know? And, and it's like, hey, fuck it, why not? This is something, and it from 2013 to now, it's been what, like eight, nine, ten, eleven, eight years. In eight years, we got 700 and some cases. Yeah. So, what does that looking, tell you? They're focusing so more. So, what, what does that tell you? This thing mm -hmm. is coming in mm -hmm. and it, it, it's happening. Why? We don't know. Mm -hmm. We don't know. We don't know why this happens, you know? We don't know. So just how there's cancer, autism, bipolarism, um, schizophrenia. schizophrenia, you know, dementia, Alzheimer's, all these things. Well, Fox G1 is making his way out there too. And just how they're always looking for cures for all other things. They're trying to find a cure for this too. You know, they're trying to find, you know, to find a cure one day and see if they could stop it. Like, at, you know, and try to find more therapies. Out. And, and, and they're having, they have people from like in Japan, scientists here in Australia and, and different everywhere, dude. Like in all the continents, little places and everything, they're doing their studies and, and they're having like, you know, it's like, but you got to have this to do all that, you know, and you got to be in a, in a high position, you know. And there's doctors and everything that their children has this. So thank God for them. Because if it weren't for them, they wouldn't be, you know, pushing pushing it to trying to find, okay, let's, let's, let's see what's this and what's that and da 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 And it, it has to be that way too. You know, it's like, I'm, I, I consider myself middle class, you know? How about if I didn't have the resources or yeah. anything and, and things like that? And that's the problem too. Like there could be more cases out there. But we're, we won't know because they're, they don't have the resources or anything and they're just satisfied and they take care of their children and how, however it is with their home remedies and things like that, you know? And that's the sad part because it's not just for the Frax G1, it's for all, all the things that there is out there, you know? And it's like, it could be a kid that has ADHD and, you know, their parents are like, ah, you know, and... and they beat them and everything, or some of them, oh, okay, you know, drink this tea and this and this and that. And poor kid is like up the wall still, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so it's hard. It's hard. It really it's always is. hard with kids more. Like, like you said, you feel hopeless. Like, what do you do? You know, but, um, yeah, you know, it, it's there. This is what it is, guys. You heard it from her. This is her case, her experience. It's always good to look further um you know her advice is be persistent and do homework keep reading look get an answer ask a question who cares people always feel like they they like stupid asking questions and like i i like to fucking know i need to know i was you know this i ask every fucking question i can think i don't care 
How better to get out of the ignorant bracket than to ask and fucking know? You what, know? Is, what is the saying? There's no such thing as, as a, a stupid, dumb yeah. question. And I remember when I first met you, um, when we have kids that are in kinder, they've been in kinder, like not together, but the same grade. So mm -hmm. when I met her, you know, I seen her little, her other little girl and I was just like, well, what's wrong with her? So she I'll be like, you know, who cares? None of your business. No, <laughs> you never were mean to me. So she told me and I was just like, the fox, the fox, what? Mm -hmm. I remember I came home and I told John like, Lily, some girl from school, this and that, and her kid, and she says she has a fox something. And John was like, what is that, Mom? I don't know, <laughs> but she has a wheelchair, and I just don't know what it is. And, yeah, like, that's why I would always ask her questions, like, well, like, why? Or what happened? Or, you know? And I feel fucked up, too, but I want to know. It's yeah. not because I'm being rude. I just want to know because, like I said. But, see, at least you asked, okay? You weren't one of those that are just like, oh, no. No. You know, they just stare. No. Ugh. I just, like, oh, you know, well, what's wrong with her? What yeah. happened? You know, like, I want to know. Mm -hmm. I need to know. Yeah. Well, I don't need to know, but I would like and to know. And no, I didn't, like, you know, I wasn't drinking when I was pregnant with her. And it's like, I wasn't smoking. I wasn't doing anything. You know, it's just a chromosomal disorder. You know, it's just, she has a deletion. You know, and it's, it's rare. And there's a couple, there's... Out here, there's one in Lancaster, there's one in San Diego, there used to be one in Buena Park, but they moved out to um, Arizona, and then um, I want to see if there's one more, I think there was one out here in Pasadena, um, but yeah, there's a couple of us out here, we haven't been able to get together or anything like that, I was going to get together with my friend, the one from Lancaster and Buena Park, but then like this whole thing, it was like at the beginning, it was like we were, we were going to get together in 2019, you know, and boy, we just never got the chance to, because 20, then they're like, oh, well, my kid has this, and you know, I, I think he might be getting a cold, okay, it's cool, you know, and then bam, 2028, and it's like, yeah, there goes our gathering. You I know? had seen something, I think it was in Bakersfield mm -hmm. last month, mm -hmm. a fundraiser of some sort for uh, Fox G1. Mm -hmm. I just don't remember like what, like it was there may be, There may be one out there too. It so. was a little, era un niño chiquito. Okay, then a baby, a yeah. A boy, a little yeah. baby. He was yeah. about maybe like eight months old. So yeah. era chiquito. And they were doing like a fundraiser of some sort in Bakersfield. It was last month. But I forgot what the whole fundraiser was for. Mm -hmm. It was something they were like trying to get parents like to have the mm -hmm. fox. So I was like, like it was cool to me because I know it was. So I was like, yeah. oh, okay, yeah, you know. <laughs> but yeah, you don't see much of it. That's mm -hmm. why, like I say, you know, ask questions, guys. Like you heard it from her. It's rude. It's more fucked up and rude to stare yeah. than to, you know, excuse me. Well, like what's the condition? Like what's wrong? You know, mm -hmm. some people might. Not like it, but at least it's better than being a fucking bobo and not rude. Yeah, you know? just staring, and then, and, and then it's like the kids, like the kids be staring too, and then they be looking at their parents, and their parents will turn around and stare too. It's like, you want to say hi to her? And, and you know what? And, and the majority of them are like, oh, you can say hi to her. I go say hi, Nana. Mm -hmm. Nana, say hi. Mm -hmm. Fuck, like, ah, that's <laughs> another thing I always say. It always comes from home though. Yeah, like, si los padres son brutos, what do you expect from your kids, you know? Yeah. That's why it's like, fuck, uh, have a little bit of, I don't know. Be a little compassionate. Be a, per, a, per, be a person, <laughs> goddammit. <laughs> fucking think about it. If that was you, would you like to be approached that way? Have manners. Be a fucking person. Um, okay, so this is what this is. Um, the month we will be, you know, this is awareness this month. Anything you want to add to finish? Wrap it up. It's been a long time coming. Yeah, I, I don't do house calls, but I did this call. <laughs> we need to put this out there. So, you didn't know, now you know. You got it for me, La Comadre B, and La Comadre B, Comadre Lily. <laughs> and that's it, guys. Thank you for your time. Thank you for spending time with us. If you have questions, if you need to talk to her, get with me somehow, or you can track her down on my Facebook. She's my friend. And, um, yeah, there's never stupid questions, so do your homework, ask questions, find people that have things in common with you, and 
get your support group going like she said you don't need to do this alone because anything alone fucking sucks you need to be like me just be a social fucking butterfly and spread your love and hate everywhere and you were a bee bro yeah a, a social buzzard <laughs> a social bumblebee a social bumblebee <laughs> so it's that guys thank you so much and que pasen buenas tardes